even later at night when maybe 60 or 70 percent of the ghosts are asleep. A man stands in front of the entrance to the church, one of the biggest buildings in town alongside the station. He's not dressed in appropriate church attire, however. His oily face is covered in stubble. His gloves have spotty discoloration. His boots are tattered. You can tell his hat smells just by looking at it. His gloves have spotty discoloration. His boots are tattered. You can tell his hat smells just by looking at it. His protruding belly pushes against his coat and the questionable stains on it. And most of all, he has a rifle. He is a watchman. They're seen at the church from time to time. Whenever something happens, watchmen stand guard in front of the church. These men patrol the church with guns, clearly neither clergy nor parishioner. The men don't know why they've been deployed, but the priest has ordered them to guard the church, so they guard the church, even if it's empty. The priest just has that much influence on this town. This particular man might look dumb, but his eyes are good enough that he doesn't need glasses, so he notices a boy approaching. Hey kid, no unauthorized access today. With great difficulty, the man tells the boy that access is restricted. But I would like to pray. Can't you make an exception? The boy shyly pleads with the man. No can do, sonny. Can't let nobody pass through. The man grips his rifle and thrusts it, threatening the boy. But the boy doesn't falter. The man can't read his facial expressions, since the boy's cap is covering his face. I didn't say there wouldn't be anything in it for you. The boy speaks. Please, take this. The boy holds out a tiny, resealable bag, with three white pills inside. They're top quality. Hmm, oh? The man hesitates. He takes a bit of time to reach an answer. Oh, f fine. So you'll let me through? Just make it quick. The man clears the way. He figured that if the boy were a malicious intruder, he wouldn't try waltzing in through the front door. And perhaps another reason is that the man was already looking forward to enjoying those pills. And thus, my infiltration of the church is a success. Whew. Just like a ninja. That sigh must have broken my concentration. Because my disguise, a coat, mask, wig, and other things I'd picked up from the garbage dump, instantly disappear. So do the remaining mint-flavored tablets, even though I only took three of them to put into the bag. Just for formality's sake, I should apologize to the recycle shop for stealing the clothes and whatnot. It looks like I can carry fewer things than most other ghosts can. Though I guess maybe I've only forgotten that fact, and am now just remembering it. But I don't have time to get lost in thought about it like I usually do. Because I hear someone. Or rather, I hear and see someone at the same time. And just the sight of that someone alone is enough to make me sick. <laughs> What brings you to the church this late at night? There stands the priest. Are you the priest? It'd be stupid to ask that, so I don't. This priest matches the priest in my vague memories, so this priest must just be the priest. He reminds me of a long dead lion. His swept back hair looks like a mane. His eyes have the sharp glint of a carnivore. His voice is low like a growl and he carries himself confidently like a true king of beasts, though he's more like a king of ghosts. This king, who appears to be around 30 years old, stands like a priest, with his hands held behind his back as he talks to me gently. How strange. I believe we had already closed for worship today. When the priest moves, I smell the scent of dust and burnt out candles. Well, I hate the church, I don't hate this smell. They let me in because I said I had some business here. I see. Rules are rules, and upholding the rules is a watchman's job. So I can't have a watchman helping someone break the rules. He must be reminded of the rules. Oh, did I say the word rules too much? The priest laughs. I can't help but laugh too. What is this feeling? 
He looks at me with composure. He looks at me with composure and magnanimity. This feeling, yes, he's like God. I heard you got quite violent downtown today. And that's something about him that I hate. Why did you leave your room? As soon as the priest says that, his composure and magnanimity disappear. It's like a switch has been flipped. He's ready to take on the ninja that killed an elder. <laughs> He's ready to take on the ninja that killed an elderly man and the police. Composure and magnanimity. Composure and magnanimity. That's two things I've stolen from him. I'm just a little bit happy. A friend suddenly came for a visit. I tell him the plain truth. I thought something like that would never happen again. I thought I had sealed away the evil. The priest keeps staring at me. I don't think he intends to take his eyes off me for a moment, not even to blink. And at the same time, it's like he's looking through me and back to that day. I wish I could see it too. I wish I could reclaim my past. There's something scary about the existence of an unfamiliar me. You've changed quite a bit since the last time I saw you. For a moment I didn't recognize you, but I surmised if anyone was going to pay us a visit, it would be you. My chest hurts, like a tooth cavity, like a long, drawn-out pain that'll deprive me of sleep. So that must explain why Pacifica and Anya seemed hesitant to get in touch with me. I've changed, and probably not for the better. Those two are nice, so they won't talk about it. I didn't notice. Those two have been watching over me, and the current me has just been taking advantage of their kindness. The me that those two talk about is just my empty shell. They embrace that shell, put on smiles, and explain things that should be common knowledge. Ah, this is... ah, this pain. Ah, this pain. Is it my heart? I heard someone say that the heart has no sense of pain, but that can't be right. But something has to hurt for me to feel this pain. Where is the pain? I can't tell where it is. I can't heal it. I hate this. The new ghost is here, right? Give her back. I speak in a firmer tone. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Give her back, but she's not yours, and you've never had her. She's dangerous. Maybe even more dangerous than you. I need her. For what purpose? My friends need her in order to help me, so I want to help them get her. It's a strange thing to say, I know. Maybe I'm broken, but this is the answer I've come up with. So please don't interfere. I see. The priest says in exasperation. He's probably stopped trying to understand where I'm coming from. I cannot allow you to take her. She is a witch. A disruptor of the town's peace. I must seal her away. Peace. What is peace? We're ghosts. We don't die if we're killed. Does peace even exist for us? If so, then isn't every ghost already forcibly sealed away inside of this so-called peace? God is testing us. Until the day we earn his mercy, I must guide the townspeople to protect the peace and live modest lives, for that is my purpose. The priest looks at me arrogantly, with his hands still held behind his back. He may be cautious of me, but he's calm. He has people to support him. He has a purpose to live for each day. He has a fulfilling life. I can't lose to someone like that. When we earn his mercy, he will lead us to paradise. By spreading his word to even one more person, we can live better lives. And I intend to hold out until that time. Each sin cleansed is another step towards paradise. Even someone as empty as me can realize that. And so I pour all of my nothingness into it. That's unacceptable. Something lights up in my empty self. I flash back to Pacifica's room 
with a broken window for just a moment. I don't know who I heard it from, but someone once said that people respond better to anecdotes than logic. That's why smart people use tall tales to garner respect and amass fortunes. No idea when or where I heard that, as always. How annoying. That's probably what inspires me to talk back, interrupting the priest. You can't sway me with a tall tale like that. I say probably, because it doesn't really feel like I'm the one who said it. It's not a tall tale, it's the truth. All of it. I'm not just some suggestible little girl. But you can be, as long as that is what God so desires. How long will you make this out to be God's fault? Do you hate this place that much? Just give it up already. There's no escape. Surprisingly enough, I laugh. A laugh that's a mess of different human emotions. Now that I think about it, people laugh all the time, whether they're happy, mad, or sad, but it's a different sort of laugh. That's probably why it's appropriate to laugh in just about any sort of situation. Who am I, anyway? Who's this girl who's talking? Some organ inside my body feels like it's been set on fire, and that fire is setting me in motion. The magma-like heat boils my blood and circulates through my body. Even my head becomes a red-hot lump of heat, lighting up every last nook and cranny of my thought process. Silence! The priest brings his hand forward, away from his back, revealing an automatic pistol which he points at me. Just as I suspected, I suppose. You're evil! A demon! Sorry, but there's no demons here, just ghosts. It's ridiculous that you pretend we're alive when we're already dead. Our souls are alive! I'm going to shoot you. You'll revive. Lives and souls be damned. It's just a universal rule. The same thing that happens to objects happens to us. I'm motivated by something more precious. The likes of you could never understand how I feel. The priest has completely lost his composure. His magnanimity. His magnanimity. His mag... The priest has completely lost his composure, his magnanimity, and his high horse. He's no longer a lion, just a man. He's just a man, which is why he must rely on a gun. A god wouldn't need a gun. I feel good, satisfied. Perhaps this is how it feels to rob someone of... I'm sorry. I feel good, satisfied. Perhaps this is just how it feels to rob someone of something truly precious to them. I won't be silent. What I have to say concerns you, too. Come on. Don't give up in this cold, dark place. Just... Silence, please. Don't say the same things she did. I feel a hint of compassion for the priest as I conclude with this final question. How long will you keep waiting, and for whom? I don't understand the words coming out of my mouth, but I do know that they're the last words that should come out of my mouth. Why? I don't know why I know. Hopefully someone does. I'll kill you. I see the priest pull the trigger in slow motion, but once I see it, my attention is drawn behind me. Father! Back towards the door I came in. The door opens, and in comes the man I had slipped past earlier, his rifle drawn. The man instantly processes the situation and... Ninja! How dare you fool me! Die! Saying that, he pulls the trigger. But it's already too late. I had already pulled a pistol out of my coat and aimed it at his brow. At this point, I'm not even questioning my lightning fast movements. I think of what I had to do. I think of what I want to do, and I do it. It's so natural. I've come to accept this unfamiliar me. A cursed ninja! The priest fires without hesitation. He probably realized that now that the man's here, chaos and destruction in the church will be unavoidable. But his aim is off, so there's no need for me to even move from this spot. Ow. I, I guess I miscalculated a little. What do you want? The priest yells. I think to myself, how should I know? But I answer, I said so at the start, didn't I? I leap off the ground, quickly closing the distance between me and the priest. The priest seems to be quite the skilled marksman, but it's nothing I can't dodge. 
so I take the gun I stole from the police officer and thrust it at his brow. I am here to see the girl. I close my eyes. Bang. The sound of a gun. Thud. The sound of something human-sized collapsing onto the ground. The sound of blood roars in my ears. Who's there? But I can still pick up the soft sound of footsteps. Ah. A perfectly cute voice. One that I remember. It looks like something's in the darkness of the pews. A thunk. I hear some sort of machine starting up. After a moment's delay, a siren starts to roar. Someone must have pulled a fire alarm or something. I'm sure the police and the priest's followers will come rushing in soon. Clara, stop the alarm. Right, if someone's in the church, it's probably her. I open my eyes. But... From the darkness, I can hear her feeble voice protest. You want to be my friend, don't you? But she sounds hesitant. <laughs> Stop it. I aim in the general direction of where she's hiding and fire. I didn't hit, but that's fine. The sound stops. I know that this sort of alarm can be switched off manually. I step towards the darkness. It doesn't look like she's going to run away. Or maybe she can't. I step up next to Clara as she desperately tries to keep standing on her shaking legs. Miss Ayako, please apologize. I'm sure everyone will forgive you if you step down now. It'll be fine. I'm sure everything will be fine. Lead the way. Will it let me help you, Miss Ayako? I, I made a flower out of paper. You can have it. That offer is somewhat attractive, actually. I imagine myself apologizing and everyone forgiving me and loving me like they love Clara. But then Pacifica and Anya would hate me, so no thanks. I refuse. I said lead the way, Poophead. I strike Clara in the face, making a proper fist with my hand, of course. Clara flies back about half a meter. Her nose bleeding, she places her hand on the ground, trying to get up, but fails. She looks confused. She hasn't realized that she's been roughed up a bit. But she's not crying. She's just got a bewildered look on her face. She still doesn't realize what's going on. And that irritates me. I hate you, but I might come to like you. Lead the way unless you want me to hit you again. Oh my gosh. I spit out those words. To be honest, I don't hate her enough that I want to hit her. Clara silently gets up without wiping her bloody nose, and with a delicate, truly ghostly voice, she says, This way. And she leads the way. Let's be friends once this is all over. Clara doesn't respond. Oof, 